Praise God, everybody, and welcome back to another time of study where we study God's Word and see what the Word of God has to share with us this afternoon. We pray that all is well have been with you today for such a beautiful day that the Lord have blessed us with. Again, we want to come along again and thank each and every one for your prayers, uh, that we continue to lift up our sick and shut in, those that are in the hospital, those that are in uh, thirst therapy and in other places, as, as well as our world in, in, in by large. We are so grateful that God has spared our life and allowed us to behold this beautiful day, for this is truly the day that the Lord has made, and we come again tonight, and we rejoice, and we are certainly glad of it tonight. We had a beautiful time this past Sunday as we amen. celebrate, amen, the Valentine's Day. We talked about love last uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, so we pray uh, that you have enjoyed uh, worship with us virtually. In-person worship has in begun to increase. Mm -hmm. We invite you to come and join in with us in, in, on our Sunday morning worship. If you can join in, you can join in with us on a, as we, we do post our virtual service at 1030. Amen. At, at mornings at 8 o'clock, our Sunday school will be taught by Brother Kevin Smith at 8 o'clock on our YouTube channel. Amen. On the First Baptist Church of Washington Hills. And at 9.30, right here, personal Sunday school, amen, right here at First Baptist Church of Watch here, you're welcome, welcome, welcome to come. Amen. Keep praying for us as we amen. certainly going to keep on praying for you. Let's pray. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, and we are grateful again, Lord God, that you allowed us to step foot in your house just one more time. We thank you for your divine covering, as you're covering us, we would through the day and, and, and all the week, and we thank you for keeping us safe as we come in personal worship right here at First Baptist Church of Washington Hills. We thank you for our Facebook friends and those who view us on YouTube. We thank you, Lord God, for the vehicle to reach so many around the country, Lord God, as we continue to preach and teach your word as we lift up all of our sick and shut in. Sister Mary Baker, Sister Rebecca Smith, Elaine Stewart, Reverend Edmund, Sister Finley, Sister Sister Ross, and others, Lord God. Lord God, those two, our elderly members, Sister Ross is not sick, but we just lift up. She's the one of our elderly members. We just thank God for you keeping up, for the Lord keeping us in his keeping care. We pray today, Lord, that you would, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the lesson that you have given me be taught in a way that even a babe can understand. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This evening we got a dynamic lesson for you tonight. This evening we're going to teach on the subject of the, the effectual prayer, how the effectual prayer works. Amen. Amen. I, was, I was asked a question not too long ago about prayer and I felt the need to go back and just uh, touch on uh, some prayer lessons that I have taught in the past. And tonight we're going to talk about how the effectual prayer works. We're going to be coming out of the book of James this afternoon. James chapter 5, verses 13 to the, down to verse 20. John, James chapter 5, amen, verse 13 down to verse 20. You have your Bibles. We surely have it posted. We thank Sheila for posting our scripture on the flash frame. Hope you can see it. Amen. You'll find this word. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayers of the prayers of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail as much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, 
and it rained not on the earth by a space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruits. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. Amen. Again, our subject tonight is how the effectual prayer work. The simple truth that it works is because the person is righteous, not because that person is without sin, but because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. amen. But that person have been made righteous, amen, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Roman 10.10 10 gives some proof to that. Mm -hmm. It says, for with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. It's because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now there is another simple truth to why the effectual fervent prayer works. Amen. Because of the righteousness, the righteous man avails as much. It's because the believer believes Amen. and understands the power, resources that come from above. Amen. Amen. He understands or she understands that when we communicate with God through prayer, he hears us when we pray. Amen. All believers, my brothers and sisters that's viewing us tonight, all believers should know that prayer is the very instrument for healing, forgiveness, and breakthrough because prayer is a powerful weapon against the spiritual Warfare that we all are in in this world that we are facing today. Amen. It is the vehicle that we use to communicate with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And oftentimes we, we pray, we give God a list of things right. that we want him to do for us. Amen. Amen. That's, that's all right if you want to do that, but there should be a time or a place once you have prayed to hear from God. Amen. 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 Some people see prayer as the last resort. Mm -hmm. Amen. When all else fails, right. the righteous believer makes prayer their number one priority. Mm -hmm. Amen. When things go falling apart in your life, and trouble seems to be knocking on your door, children won't act right, your husband won't act right, your wife won't act right. Amen. Prayer becomes your number one priority. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is pleased, my brothers and sisters, he is very pleased to accomplish his purpose in us. Right. And he delights in answering our prayers because he loves us. Amen, amen. amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, a very familiar scripture to all of us. Notice what he said. He said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, he says, let your request be made known unto God. Amen? Amen. So if you understand the power of prayer, amen, you will make prayer your number one priority. Amen? That just gives us just a tidbit on how it works. Amen? Just a tidbit on how it works. Amen. But, but James makes us very clear that prayer can work in, in different ways. Amen. Notice what he says in verse 13. He said, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Let's look at verse 14. He says, is, is any sick among you? Amen. He said, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord. James 
want to make it very clear that in every situation that occur in our lives, amen, in, and in my life, amen, that it's important that we respond correctly. And he meant somebody. For the one who's been afflicted, he must pray. And the person who's happy, he says, let him sing praises to God. Even to the sick and shut in, if they, mu they must respond by calling on the elders because they are committed to prayer. Amen. amen. He lays out a, a principle here for us to follow, amen, when we are sick, when we are down and out, amen, for us to call, amen. It's, it's okay, amen, for the, for the elders, amen, for the deacons, amen, to go and pray for the sick as well as to shut in. The elders are spiritual, mature men who have been given authority in the church. Even the elders' faith must be in the Lord and not in the oil. Amen? Right. The oil has to be prayed over. The oil has to be used in a way that, it, that the elder believes. It is just a, it's just a point that they make, amen, when they're using the oil. Amen. As far as to lay hands, it's the point of contact, amen, that they use, amen, to lay oil on those that are sick. Amen. amen. But the elder has to be in good standards. Yes. Amen. With the Lord. And I say that, now, watch what, he's, not watch what uh, James says in verse 15. Look at what he said. James says that the prayers of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. The prayer of faith has the power to penetrate the spirit realm and supernaturally. Amen. And supernaturally impact, impact the natural world of the person who is actually sick. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he has to pray the prayer of faith. Amen. Not a prayer of doubt. Amen. That we pray, we gotta pray, pray the prayer of faith. Amen. It is another issue that we, we need to look at, and, and I'm gonna give some time and research in it when we pray God's will. Amen. You gotta understand it is in God's will, amen, that you be healed. It is in God's will that you prosper as your soul prospers. Amen. It's, it's in his will. And if you pray in the prayer of faith, you pray in, in, in understanding and belief that God hears you when you pray. Amen. Amen. When you're praying over the sick, he says, shall save the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise him up. Amen. And if any commit sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Amen. The prayer of faith is a prayer prayed in belief yes. as well as trust. But now, if you only if you only trust in God, as long as He cooperates with you, as long as God is, is blessing you, and you that's the only reason you pray to God. Then you can rest assured that that's going to come a time when your prayer is not going to be answered. Right. Amen. amen. You just can't use God, yes, a, Amen, and, and right. as a a magic lamp that you rub and poof, and your blessings appear. Amen. You got to pray pray the prayer of faith. This is why Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that God is pleased with us. Amen. He pleased. It's impossible to please God unless we, we use our faith. And he says the day that come to God must believe that he is. If you don't believe that he's God and he's capable, amen, or hearing you when you pray or capable of healing those who you're praying for, then you, not, you need not to go and to pray over them if you don't believe that God can do that. See, to, you, you mean to come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seeks him. Amen. So we have to put our faith into action. Faith without works is dead. And so we have to believe and trust God completely that God is able to raise those that are sick and even forgive those who have committed sin. Amen. Mark 11, 24 says, he says, what things whatever you desire. Look at whatsoever things that you desire. Amen. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you right. shall have them. Amen. That's another, that's a key principle there. It's, it's believing. 
Amen. You got to believe that God hears you when you pray. He said, whatever you desire, the things whatsoever you desire. Amen. And say, so in one point, we, we look at desires and desires. Sometimes God gives you a desire. Amen. Give you an urge in your heart. Amen. For certain things or certain things you want to do for the Lord. He said, so whatever the things that you desire. He said, when you pray, you got to believe that he hears you when you pray. But you got to believe it in order to receive it. Amen. Prayer is an interesting tool that we use. You know, we, we sing a song, my mama prayed for me, my father prayed for me, the church prayed for me, the deacon prayed for me. But there come a time where you need to pray for yourself. All right. Amen. Amen. You, you have to pray uh, fervently for yourself. Amen. And, and that, that, that what, plagues, what plagues the believer is sin. We can't get around it. What plagues us is sin. Amen. It hinders the believer's prayer when he stands, when he goes before God. It, it really, you have to come to God. Amen. You have to confess your sins to God. You have to make that path way clear to God when you approach him. Amen. We, he knows all about you. He knows the life that you live. He, he, he never slumbers, nor does he ever sleep. So he see you. And so you want to make your approach to him in the mighty name of Jesus. I mean, you want to ask him to forgive you of your sin. Amen. James, James says in that verse 14, he says, it, it appears in the 14th verse that the reason that this believer is sick is because of sin. It, it appears that in the 14th verse, it, it appears that he, he, he had committed some sin. Amen. And so James Actually, tells him, he says, that even if he has committed sin, right. he can be forgiven. The prayer, the prayer warrior can pray for him, and even if he has committed sin, it can be forgiven him. Amen. Amen? And so we understand the power of prayer. But how it does it affect the work is that the person who is praying got to be in good standards with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Now, 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 watch what he says in verse 16. Amen. In verse 16, he tells us, he says, confess our faults one to another. Amen. Amen. One to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Right? He says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Amen. Amen. Now, now what he's actually, you got to understand, because in this part of this verse, verse 16, can come a little bit difficult to, for us to understand because he says, confess your faults one to another. Amen. But you got to understand this person, in order for this person who is praying for the person who has committed sin, he's got to confess or let the prayer, the person who's praying for him, understand what he's dealing with. So that he can pray fervently for the person who's needing prayer. Amen. So he says, confess your faults one to another. And then he said, and pray one for another. Amen. So it's okay for me to have this relationship with Brother Kevin and say, Kevin, I need you to help pray, pray with me. Amen. So when we can agree together, amen, he can pray for me. Amen. And so we pray together because I'm confessing. I'm confessing my faults to another person. And that person can pray for me fervently because he understands what I'm dealing with. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes when we pray for people, people tell us to pray for them. We don't have no idea what we're praying for them for. But we know God knows all Amen. things. Amen. 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 And he confirms, he confirms it in, in, in 1 John 1 and 9. He said, if we confess our sins. Look what he said. He is, Jesus is faithful, and not only is he faithful, he's just to forgive us of our sins. And he doesn't stop there. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad Jesus never stopped, leaves us hanging. Because after we have been forgiven of sin, we need to be cleansed of that. Both mind, body, mind, and spirit. Oftentimes when we have for forgiveness, the sin, guilt, is still hanging in our mind. Amen. We walk around with this guilty attitude, amen, for what we have done. He says, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I thank God for, for allowing the cleaning process, amen, to clean us from the, the guilty thought, 
Because oftentimes people walk around with a guilty heart. Yeah. Amen. They're asking a person to forgive them, but yet they haven't forgiven themselves. And so they, they live life with, on, with a guilt trip. Amen? Amen. And then go back to verse 16. Notice the B part of verse 16. He says, the effectual fervent prayer, amen, of a righteous man avails much. Amen. What is effectual fervent prayer of the righteous? Well, first we got to understand what effectual means. Effectual means to produce the desired effect inquired for, amen, it, it, it can produce the inquired desire that the petitioner is petitioning God for. The word fervent describes something that is hot, which implies that our prayer should be made with a burning desire for God to hear our heartfelt prayer. Now, watch this. And when the two are connected together, effectual and fervent together, amen, he says, he says, the prayer availeth much. Right. Amen. So you got two components here in that, that particular verse, in the B part of the verse, effectual and fervent. Amen. So if we, if we effectively ask seeking God for the things that we want or our desires are for, but in this, in this writing, in this letter that James is writing is for the sick. Mm -hmm. Amen. And for those who have committed some type of sin. And so we are, they have called for the elders to come to pray for them. Amen. And the elders have, is coming and the elders are going to pray fer fervently and, and effectually over the petitioner who is asking for prayer. Amen. Amen. you got to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. Amen. you got to trust and believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. One, someone said, uh, Brother Kelvin, that prayer meeting is the least attended uh, time in, in church gathering. Amen. And it should be one of the most times that we have should have a full house. Amen. Because we all are going through some things. Amen. Amen. And if we can all come together, just touching the green together, we can move some things away out of our lives. Amen. Amen. He's, now, when the confessional, petitional, share their faults or sin, then the elder who is righteous in righteous standard with God can pray effectively. Not only can he pray effectively, but he can pray fervently. Amen. Because he has an idea what he's praying for. Amen. And so don't be afraid, amen, to share it. If you have confidence with the person, a person have to earn that type of confidence. Amen. I'm not sharing with you, just share with anybody because some people, when you share, share with them, they go off and they tell other people uh, what they have done. So if you have confidence and, and, and you know that person, you share with them and you have confidence that they won't, they won't divulge your uh, confession to them. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 17 where James says that Elijah was a man subject to like passion as right. we are. And he prayed earnestly that he it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by a space of three years and six months. Amen. Amen. I guess we better go ahead and include 18 in there as well. And he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruits. Amen. Now, I, I think he brings James into the equation to let us know that even though we are who we are in Christ, amen, he says Elijah was just like us. Right. Amen. He, he shared the same passion, earthly passion, that you and I have. Amen. He suffered depression. Amen. Not only did he suffer depression, but he went into doubt. He even went through emotional setbacks. Amen. But he still earnestly prayed that it might not rain it, on the earth for a space of three years and six months. Mm -hmm. And now notice this. And when God showed him that he heard him when he prayed, mm -hmm. Elijah didn't hesitate again to pray again for his rain, according to verse 18. Mm -hmm. Amen. Here's, here's what I'm trying to say. 
Even though Elijah was called by God and he done great things. Amen. God still want to use you to do great things. Amen. We, we say in Christendom, what he done for one, he'll do for another. When the last time you actually stepped out on faith and tried it? Amen. Just to see whether or not he'll come through for you. When the last time you actually sincerely prayed to God for God to move in a mighty way in your life and you trusted him, amen, for him to move it, you, you, it didn't matter how long it took, you just knew that he was going to bring to pass the prayer that you had prayed for. Amen. When, was it when you felt uh, the doctor had showed you something uh, gave you some disturbing news and you went into a fervent prayer then? Or, or when your child got in trouble then you prayed fervently then? Yeah. You see, our relationship with him should not be when things happen in our lives unexpectedly. Our relationship with him should be on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning when we wake up, we're communing with him. Amen. We're thanking him for allowing our eyes to spring open to a brand new day. Mm -hmm. Even late at night, when if you're married, you're saying good night to your wife, or you're saying good night to your husband, you should say your last words to, to God. Mm -hmm. You remember what we used to say when we were shooting? God lay me down to sleep. Mm -hmm. If I should die before I wake, Lord, for my heart, my soul to take. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the last words we said to the Lord before we jumped in bed. Amen. That's the kind of relationship we should have with him. Amen. With him. Not when something urgent, when something urgent in our life impacted our life and the things that we, we're doing in this world. And surely those times are going to come in our lives. But when you're ready and you know that your relationship is above board, amen. When those things emergency come, you can say, Abba Father, Dad, Father, here I am again. And he'll hurry up and he'll hear you when you pray. Amen? I think the difference between Elijah and most believers is that Elijah understood the power of prayer. I believe it is. And we have most believers really don't believe in the power of prayer. They only pray at the last results. And it should be the first priority in our life. We should be praying for him. You see, when Elijah defeated Jezebel on Mount Carmel, mm -hmm. Elijah told Ahab, you best eat and drink for there are coming abundance of rain. Elijah believed by faith so fervently that God was going to bring rain. He said, yes, sir, amen, to look for the rain. Mm -hmm. Amen. Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat, drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. He was so confident sitting there. He said, so Ahab went to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the, to the top of Mount Carmel, and he cast, he, he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his legs. He began to pray. And he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. Seven times he went. He made him look. And, but on that seventh time, when he looked, amen, when he looked the seventh time, he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Amen. He believed. Amen. He kept telling the servant, Go back and look again. Go back and look again. Sometimes the people who you're dealing with, the per people who are close to you, they may can't believe like you can believe. They, can, they, they don't have the kind of faith that you have. Amen. And, and they have to become believers. Amen. You have to show them. Amen. You have to keep trusting, trusting God. Amen. We're trusting God every time we lift up our sick and shut and we're trusting God to, for divinely to heal them. Amen. Amen. One of our urshers got a one of our urshers got a testimony. I, 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 I'm praying that she would share that testimony, Amen, to, to our family, church family here, Amen. How God showed showed the nurse, nurse practitioner, the X-ray 
showed her the, the dark place in her body. Amen. Amen. But first thing she said that she had dismissed her and said, I'm, I'm not going to do an x-ray. You seem to be okay. And then the Lord spoke to the nurse practitioner and says, well, let's come on. Let's just take an x-ray and just see. Amen. That's the Lord moving in a mighty, mighty way. And when they took their x-ray, they spotted something in her body. Amen. And that's just the Lord moving in a mighty way. I'm telling you, when you have a relationship with the Lord and you pray before you have surgery and the church family was praying, amen, God will move in a mighty way. We still trust in the Lord to protect us through this, uh, this uh, pandemic situation, even though it might be dropping in certain areas. We still pray that the Lord protect our children. Yeah. Amen. We're not grumbling about masses and none of that stuff. We just believe in by faith Amen. that God will protect us. Amen. 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 So, so Elijah is no greater man than us. He was called by God. He did great things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he done great things. I think James brings him in to let him know he 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 was a man just like you and I are. Amen. Amen. He suffered some things just like you and I suffered to some time. But he believed God by prayer, amen, that God would bring rain. And when he saw that God had dried up the earth, amen, for three years and six months, he wasn't afraid. He didn't hesitate. He prayed again. And the Bible said in chapter and verse 18 that it started raining again. So my brothers and sisters, keep trusting in the Lord, amen, and don't never doubt him, amen, amen, amen. We're going to go, we're going to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20, he reps. John brings, James brings chapter 5 to a close in verse 19 and 20. 19 and 20 is really attached to the sick and shut in, but he talks in terms of, he says, brethren, if any of you do err, uh -huh. let me say, do err from the truth, uh -huh. and one convert him, look what he says, let him know. The person, he said, let him know that he which is converted the sinner the person who actually went to the person mm -hmm. who have erred. This word err means to, to, to apostasy, mm -hmm. to walk away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's so many we know have walked away from following, amen, the following Christ. Mm -hmm. He's, he said, but someone went to him and went to him and convinced him to come back. Amen. He said, let him know that he which convert, he convert the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death. Right. Notice it said, and shall hide a multitude of sin. Not only, my brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm closing. Should we pray for our sick and shut in? Should we pray, Lord, to cover our children? But we should pray for those who walked away from fellowship and walked away from following the ways of Christ. Not only should we pray for those who, who walk away from the fellowship and following the ways of Christ, but we should, in our prayer, we should pray for the sinner man, boy and girl, amen, that their eyes will come open, their hearts be receptive to receive Jesus Christ in their hearts, that they be saved, amen, from corruption, they be saved from the wrath of God, amen. It says that those who do that say, hide them from a multitude of sin. Amen? Amen. Prayer is a powerful weapon. And I pray that we can utilize the power of prayer in our lives. Amen. Every day. Amen. That's how it works. It works. Amen. That you believe by faith that God can do all things but fail. Amen. We believe. And we believe that he has all power in his hand. And if you believe and you stand on the promise of God, you can pray. Pray for your family members. You know somebody in your family members who, who's not saved, amen, who always talking in terms of people who are in church and going to church. Pray for them that the Lord would change their heart. Amen? Amen. Just like our mothers and our fathers pray for us, let's pray for them. Amen? Let's pray for them because the prayer works in a mighty, mighty way. Amen. Maybe my mom never got a chance. My mom never got a chance to see see me grow up and to become a, a man or become a father or become a, a servant of God. Amen. But I'm sure she prayed Amen. that the Lord's hands would be on my life. And she wasn't afraid to put me in God's hands. Amen. And that scared me more than some whoopings that I would get. 
Amen. Because I know I couldn't hide from God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Amen. If you keep praying, keep trusting. The Lord will show up in your life. He will reveal to you who he is. And if he had not already, he will reveal to you. He'll manifest himself to you. Amen. If he had not already manifest himself to you. If he woke you up this morning, he manifested his love to you. But allowing you to behold a brand new day. If your family's intact and you have made it through this pandemic season, amen, amen and you're on the other end of it, God has protected you. Amen. amen. You should give him praise. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for the subject of prayer and how effectual fervent prayer works. We pray, Lord God, that they pray, Lord God, in, in a in a heat, in a fervent manner, yes. that they continue to trust you in all things, mm -hmm. that they put you first place in their lives. We pray for marriages today, yes. that you continue to, if there's a wedge been wedged in their marriage, that you remove that wedge and the husband and wife come and begin to see one another as they first begin to have their relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. We pray for all our children. Yes, Lord. As they make ready back and forth to school. Yes, Thank you for covering them. We pray for our city, yes, those that are who governing the things that we need for our city. Mm -hmm. We pray for our president. Yes, yes. As the as war seems to raise its ugly head again yes. and lives going to be lost. Yes. We pray that you will intervene in that situation. We just thank you, Lord God, mm -hmm. for the opportunity to teach again as we come to another Sunday gathering. We pray that your Holy Spirit be a part of our worship and gathering. In Jesus' name we pray.